What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are at True Automotive here in Denver. Truck is on the lift and if you look closely, you'll notice that Dirt King is no longer on the truck. We replaced the Dirt King plus 3.5 long travel with the Marlin Crawler plus 3.5 long travel. Uh, reason being is because being out in Colorado, it's a lot rockier than what Dirt King is really made for and the max tire size for Dirt King is a 35 inch tire. I'm on 37s, even with the firewall tubbed out, I still rub a little bit. Now, I just wanna make something very, very clear to you guys is that the Dirt King kit is a high quality product. I'm not bashing them at all. What they make is a fantastic product. It's just not suited for my needs. Um, now, if I was in, let's say California and I was hitting whoops and little jumps and all that stuff doing go fast stuff, then yes, Dirt King would be a great kit for me. But being out here in Colorado, where it's a lot more slow going and crawling over rocks, the Marlin Crawler kit is really what you're gonna want for that kind of stuff. Being the RCLT HD, it literally stands for Rock Crawler Long Travel Heavy Duty. It's the only rock crawling IFS kit designed for these trucks specifically. Um, but I'll show you the process. As you guys can see, spindle and brake and everything is off. Now Billy is removing the upper control arms. We'll remove the lower and the shock and pull everything out and then do the same on that side. Billy is flying through this. Next is remove this lock shock. And we're gonna swap out the spring cup and the rod end for the Marlin Crawler kit. And this side will be pretty much ready to go back together once we get this old steering rack remove you guys can see in there how it self clearanced itself and is leaking now so good stuff passenger side is all pulled apart and now Billy's gonna do the exact same thing to the driver side all right so Billy has the entire passenger side out and now is tearing apart the driver side here Looks like we've got upper shock and the spindle left to remove on this side and then start pulling out that steering rack and putting Marlin Crawler stuff in. All right, well, while I was unboxing Marlin Crawler stuff, found some swag, swag, swag. So I'm gonna put it on. Appreciate it, Brandon. So Billy has decided to pull the entire diff. So if I have to remove that skid, and then this drive shaft in there to get this thing pulled out. And that'll hopefully give us enough room to be able to go back with the Tundra steering rack instead of having to remove this and have to find seals and all that stuff for replacing it. So, see if this works. Billy. It'll work. All right, so Billy has the Solo Motorsports Tundra steering rack out. You guys can see it was leaking pretty good. So it doesn't have any boots, but yeah, that is not what you want. Um, but the Solo Motorsports rack has two misalignment spacers, so one for each side. Whereas the Marlin Crawler LC200 rack has the OEM on one side, and then you air hammer press this side out, so the one closest to the actual steering mechanism, um, and press this misalignment spacer in. But this thing is an absolute unit and it has boots. So I'm not worried about this thing leaking in the next six months. Billy says this is the way. So to the right is the Tundra rack. The, that's you. And this is the Land Cruiser rack. The guy she told you not to worry about. Dang, that's beefy. Sheesh. So because this rack is so beefy, Marlin Crawler sends you this little template here. You're gonna bolt that in. Um, secure it nice and tight and this is going to be where you're going to drill to put a new slug in for that new Land Cruiser rack. Billy has the new hole drilled out right here and he's going to try to get that sleeve in there nice and straight, tack it up and then drill a hole 
all the way through for the bolt. So you guys can see the steering rack in. Billy, go ahead and wiggle it. So this rack is beefy, so you can see it wiggling there. So what he's done is he's marked where he has to notch out the frame there so this rack can actually sit down in there and then it'll be flush on this side and actually fit how it is technically supposed to. So we're gonna notch this out and then get going on it, I guess. All right, there is our notch for the steering rack to sit in there nice and flat and flush. So we'll throw that back in after we get some of these welds cleaned up. And we're ready to go start putting arms in. All right, so now you guys can see where the rack actually sits inside the frame there now. So now once this is all tight and we have the diff drop and everything in here, and this is sandwiched down. This will be a perfect fit. And that's why you take out the front diff, because that's much easier. So now Billy has the rack mocked up to so weld this all in. He is mocking up the reinforcement plates for the front. And then we're gonna cut this off to do the reinforcement for this backside. And he's gonna grab it right now. Let's see. So basically it'll sit just like that and bolt in to there, reinforcing the back of the rack while this all reinforces and double shears the front of the rack. everything welded in for this steering rack reinforcement. Um, he's got the old bump stop location cut off, grounded down for the new one, and currently is working on changing out the tire, or the, uh, the rod ends on the shock, since the rod ends and the cups are gonna be slightly different geometry-wise for the Marlin Crawler kit. So Billy now has the new rod ends on the long travel coilovers, and we've also got some new spring cups. So these are gonna be a little bit shorter, all to be Marlin spec. And then we've got new hydros that are gonna get welded in there. These are threaded so we can adjust it a little bit easier. You guys are gonna hear some cutting over there with Austin. But now he's getting the steering shaft ready. All right, so now Billy is shortening the steering shaft to fit with the new LC200 steering rack. So the steering shaft itself comes down from here from your steering wheel all the way down to this connection point here. Leave this plastic piece on, that's a dust cover. The steering shaft will actually fit over that, the split. Um, but it has to be shortened to fit this because it's a bigger and longer rack. Billy is now putting the bushings into the upper control arms. He already put the grease fittings in there. You want to make sure to use marine grade or just water resistant, I guess, grease. Just because these are obviously going to be exposed a bit. Sorry, I've not been filming. I've been helping Billy with the uppers. So passenger and driver side uppers are in. Now he is working on getting the lowers assembled with the bushings and sleeves. We'll put those in and then we'll do the spindles. Uppers and lowers are in with some finessing by Billy and his assistant. The assistant is me, um, but they are in. And now he's gonna tighten down these cam bolts, front and rear, and then obviously not torque because you have to line it and everything after everything gets cycled, but then we can put in spindles. And then we can cycle the shock and see where those bump stops need to actually go. If this kit wasn't beefy enough, look at this spindle. My God. There ain't no bend in this thing, I'll tell you that right now. Double shears too. All right, Billy has the steering shaft shortened, welded all up and painted. 
He's also got the steering rack gussets all steel it coated. If you guys didn't know, steel it on pretty much everything on the truck. Front bumper, all steel it. Front skid, steel it. Rear bumper, steel it. But now he's mounting the coilovers in so we can cycle uppers, lowers, and get the bump stops in the spot that it needs to be at. Now the nice thing is, is they're threaded, so we have some adjustability after we mount them in. I think he's doing some research. All right, these are gonna go upside down, yep. like so. Run your bolt through, like so. Wash your nut. Grab the other one and do it again. Other side. This steering rack is what Billy says you want. It's got boots, so you don't have to worry about it leaking prematurely. It's beefy as all hell. He's got the steering shaft here all shortened and lined up. He's mocking it up so Austin can come and do the limit straps and the bypass tab here to connect to the Dirt King bypass hoop up there. Oh, Okay. Dang. Now Joel can start putting the bypasses in and then we'll start cycling everything to see exactly where we need to put the hydro bumps. So Joel has the bypass and the coil over here cycled. Bypass just barely almost bottomed out but not quite and then that gives us an idea of where we have to set our hydro bump to make sure it makes contact with that striker plate and we're gonna come off of the frame about an inch or so. And the thing we wanna keep in, uh, in mind is when you guys are doing this, if you're doing this yourself, set the bump where you think it's gonna go and then let this articulate all the way down, so full droop, because this bypass is gonna move that way towards the bump just a little bit. Make sure you don't make contact with it there. All right guys, it's been a couple days. Uh, Joel is now working on the truck. So he's got the bypass tabs, limit strap tabs all welded in. The locked off road threaded hydro bumps welded in, uh, as well as the limit straps themselves welded in. And now we're gonna put some springs on the locked coilovers and start getting everything kind of put back together. Sorry if I sound like crap. I've been sick the last couple days, but it's coming along really, really nicely as you can see. All right, as you guys can see, Joel and I are flying through this. We're gonna keep going, hopefully get it done. It is 4.49 p.m., they close at five. We're probably gonna be here a little late to get this thing done for a shakedown run this weekend. All right, guys, we got ride height adjusted. Here is full droop. We let the limit strap stretch overnight. Now we're gonna put this where the Super Duty is, get it aligned, and it's gonna be all done. Dang, look at that thing. All right, guys, there you go. There is the Marlin Crawler RCLT HD kit installed on the truck. Thanks to True Automotive, Austin, Billy, and Joel um, from staying late Friday night to coming in on their day off. Today is Saturday to get everything dialed in, diagnose a power steering pump and steering rack issue, and then fixing it. Um, I'm super happy with how the truck looks. Billy has taken it for two test drives now 
after aligning it and says that the suspension all feels really good. And I think that's partly because of the geometry uh, of the Marlin Crawler kit itself. It's a slightly different geometry than most other long travel kits because most other long travel kits use your factory spindle, whereas this has a whole entirely new spindle. Um, I mean, it replaces uppers, lowers, spindle, and everything in between. So this geometry, I think, is gonna be a little bit better, let the suspension move. I also couldn't get my camber on the driver's side any less than at least a degree. So it was usually about 1.2 to 1.4 degrees of camber. Now, both sides are at about 0.1. So now I won't have to eat through tires because these 37s are very expensive. Um, I want to say a huge shout out to Marlin Crawler for you know, making such an awesome kit and being willing to work with me, Locked Off Road. Love your shocks, always will. And then obviously True Automotive for everything they do for the truck and for me myself. Um, if you guys like this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.